Hey everybody! Hello. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode. Holy cow! Twelve. Twelve. All right, twelve. Yeah. Wow. Super stoked about this. Mm -hmm. um, whoa! Lots of chat already. Sorry, we're yeah. a touch late. We just had to grab a lunch because we've got an engagement after lunch that and we then have to be we to. We had a, a mini technical issue. Mm, again. And that was like, don't you think that looked like a buffalo? No, I, I fixed it. I thought what? I no. I did fix it. It went back. <laughs> I was oh boy. <laughs> anyway, try to ignore my hair. Um, I was supposed to. I did fix it. I swear to God. But because I had, I was goofing around. I did a hairdo that really bugs her. This is totally not tea related. Yeah. But now it's stuck. <gasps> so anyway, um, let's see. Let's just maybe quickly. Do you want to just catch yeah. up? Because right, everybody's right, right. like having a little chat while mm -hmm. they're waiting for us. All right, so Instagram. Hey, we're just catching up with the uh, YouTube chit chat, but welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 12. Josh, hello. Jan from Jan. Czech Republic, ahoy. Uh, getting some and tea Cindy, on. Cindy, awesome. hello. Who's Cindy? And oh, yeah, Cindy's yeah, here. Cindy hey, is Cindy. Gonna actually, drink some uh, smoke or some sucho. Oh, thing. right on. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. And uh, looks like Jan might be too. Um, yeah, yeah, they noticed that we're a little bit late. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry about that, guys. guys. Glad you guys could chit chat though while mm -hmm. we were catching up. And um, where did you get it? Have some mealy, which is quite good. Mm, ours is better. Ha! No, we, <laughs> <laughs> we have it too. And David, David Kilmer, welcome. Hey, friends, love the introduction. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. That was not our technical issue this time. We found out a new little glitch. But anyway, <laughs> and everybody says hello. So mm. awesome. You look gorgeous. I'm echoing the words oh, of thank you, Natasha. Natasha, but I also agree. Awesome. Good. So here we are at uh, Sunday Tea Book. So for those of you who are new to the uh, live stream, this is a stream that we do every Sunday at 1 p.m. where we um, open up books, articles, and papers that are very hard to come by mm -hmm. uh, in, Western, um, in Western tea circles but are full of great information and are written in Chinese exclusively or possibly already translated, but the translation may be a little bit hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're doing is instead of just present a translation, a finished translation, we're actually jumping on here with you guys live. And why would we do that? Well, because in my five years of working with Jen and learning about Chinese tea, I realized that a lot of the confusion and a lot of the misunderstanding about tea and what is what it is and what it what are the important distinctions what are the less important distinctions it comes from understanding the culture the language sort of the why and how and who what and when of all this happens so by doing it together live we're going to share that it's, and it's really been epic also you guys are great at mm. helping us find words every now and then we can't find a word so don't hesitate to chip in with your suggestions yes your questions your comments whatever that happens to be this is, as you can see by all the chatter already, it's totally uh, an interactive session. Yes, and we really uh, appreciate all the help we get. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So today we continue on China Tea Book uh, written by my mom, Jian Li Wu. And uh, we're going to dive into some tea curio. And yes, more super fun section some, uh, that we've been working on. Absolutely. Some dry brew topics. Uh, the great thing about the book, as you have uh, probably noticed from just how detailed it dives into almost every little aspect of tea accessories. So it's a really great foundation for people who just get into Chinese tea to really know the basics of everything and uh, get comfortable with the tea names, tea turns, a lot of uh, uh, tea word yeah it allows us to kind of set a baseline so in future videos we'll know what we mean when we say xyz or yes. whatever tea accessory we pull out yes awesome so um so today yes as okay. you guys have already mentioned yes and i'm super excited for that too because i haven't drank this uh, for a while too so it's a uh, top gray lapsan suchong can you see maybe here is that better Better for YouTube, worse for Instagram. Yes. But I think Instagram got a nice look at it. So this is a really tiny little bit leaf. It's not like a like a CTC chopped. Those are fine little buds and stuff. Mm. It's top. Uh, this comes directly from the. Did you say CBC? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. CTC. What did yeah, I say? Yeah, no. I don't know. No, no. CTC okay, is okay. right. I think you said it right. But yeah, it's not. It's little buds. I just had a giggle because I thought you said CBC. <laughs> little buds okay the message is little buds yeah yeah 
It's uh, not just chopped. Uh, so it comes from the uh, the family whose ancestors uh, invented mm. black tea, and this is their top grade uh, authentic process with the pine smoke. And don't be frightened because it's a smoke because it's oh, such yeah. a pleasant. It's smoke a game changing tea. Yes. Right. We get a lot of folks who we if we're brewing this at a festival and we've got it on and mm. people are like oh. Oh, I don't like smoky tea. We're like, mm, I get it. I totally get it. Like burnt tire and stuff. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. But I recommend, you know, I kind of gently nudge them. Have a try anyway. Just might. And they can't believe. Just like any good tea. So when they mm. have a smoke, have something, it doesn't uh, sacrifice the other elements. That's right. It still it's has the sweet. It's a balance uh, complicated mm. with the desired, uh, we call that long and merry. Uh, the dried long and merry sweetness mm. is uh, all there is. Anyway, I'm super excited. Yeah, it's going to be, a, yeah. I picked okay. the tea, so I put this one in the lineup on purpose. <laughs> so, cool. um, oh, sorry, did oh. you want to? No. I was going to just say, it? I wanted to back up because you said something really quickly and just right over it. Oh. But I just want to repeat it and make sure it's sunk in. This tea is made by the family whose ancestors invented black tea. Okay, that is pretty mind blowing. Um, and oh. also the invent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Inventor of a ginger mate. Right, the, the tea producer who came up with how to process only bud black tea perfectly, which mm. is ginger mate. The real, the authentic the real ginger mate, which mm. you can both find the ginger mate and top grade lapsan suchong on our website. Okay, just wanted to let that soak in. Now, for um, as Jen mentioned, we're doing, uh, we're, we're translating in this, these sessions of Sunday Tea Book, we're translating. Uh, Jian Li's China Tea. This one is already translated, so it's an English text alongside with the Chinese text. So what we're going to do is for you guys on Instagram, I'm going to bring the book right up on the screen, but I can't do it on Instagram. So you got to hop over to YouTube if you want to follow along with the book. I'll read a section and then I'll go over it and I'll explain what I understood well, what I didn't understand, what was confusing. Um, and then Jen will jump in to clarify those points. And if anything was totally missed, she'll, she'll make sure it doesn't get missed because she's read over the Chinese version. And every now and then something's just completely dropped. So, and as always, the link to the complete translation will be down in the description below. Um, so you can head on to our website and check that out. And that's about it. So when you're on the website though, you could also find, as Jen mentioned, uh, these, this top grade Lapsung, the ginger mate, and tons of other fantastic teas really helps our, uh, our passion for tea. Uh, it helps us continue to pursue our passion for fantastic tea and keep on bringing them to you. And of course, I have to say it because I'm on YouTube, but if you're on Instagram, here's my apology in advance, but don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notify bell so that you'll know whenever we go live with a session like this or other great videos, vlog, all that stuff. All right, so I'm gonna say goodbye to Instagram and we are going to uh, get brewing this fantastic tea and we are going to pull the book up and get down to it. So bye-bye Instagram, mm -hmm. hopefully see you guys on YouTube. I'm gonna address the YouTube uh, the the screen so you guys can see perfect. a little That's bit just of perfect. that. I kind of uh, I I was setting up the whole table and stuff, and I uh, was bringing uh, like a tea pads and a wastewater uh, bowl and stuff, and realized I forgot to bring serving pot and teacup. So I just uh, grabbed two teacup here. Uh, the closest teacups I can find, and I'm just gonna skip serving pot today. Uh, because I've never used this tea cups with this guy one set, so what I did was measure up how much I could fill the guy one so that I can distribute the tea evenly here. That's what you probably didn't see that. But you got to figure it out. You don't need me to run for a sharing pot. It sounds like you're gold. No, I'm okay. Yeah, she's so she's so good. All right, so guys, let's get down to it while we uh, get the tea brewing. I guess I will. Uh, I'm. Oh, let's smell the tea a little bit. Let's not rush this. This is a just as a I delightful tea. I just dive my tea. whole face in it. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna have a little smell. So as as Jen mentioned, the uh, the this tea is so balanced. When you smell that, even though the gaiwan is piping hot and the aroma is really coming up fully. You get a big shot of sweet longanberry mm. with that pine smoky. Um, so, so balanced. 
and not as strong as I would expect yes. from a piping hot guy one. This yes. is those kind of tea that are a little bit greedy with the aroma and I, I've had it before so I know it's getting saved for the liquor and the mouthfeel. And you, uh, it's not naturally smoked. I know some, mm. some smokes a lot of mm. on the market. You open the dry leaf, even just in the bucket or in the tin, it's Oof. just poof, smoky <laughs> and it's unpleasant. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm, I'm going to dive into this. Yeah, let's get them. Yeah. Well, the tea table took a while to come up, but there we go. I'll get the brewing, brewing cam on. Right. Watch the master at work. Hey, yo. Don't get me shy, okay? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> See how I screw up? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come over to the book now. Okay. Pressure's off, okay? We're heading over to the book and we're gonna get started. So guys, we are coming to the end. We've been in this in-depth deep dive, as Jen had mentioned, into sort of the essential tea set components, which we finished uh, a while ago. And now we're into the uh, sort of the more optional, but very fun uh, accessories you can add to your, um, to, your tea, to your tea table and to your brewing experience. So we're gonna finish those up today. And I just wanted to point out that coming up is another awesome topic, pinnacle or uh, pivotal, like what, I don't know, I'm trying to say like super important to tea and that is water. So let's take a minute and have a, let's have a look at those. Back to us, show those. That was good, you show the liquor. Yeah, we'll let you see the liquor, the liquor color. A bit. There it is on our front camera. Here, on the same background, you have dark color, I have light color. It feels oh, like yeah. really different. Hold, go here. Hold them together. Pretty good, mm. pretty good-ish. Mm. Anyway, cheers guys. Oh, and you have almost like a, the smoky aroma on the liquor reminds me of a peated smokiness that you'd get in like a Laphroaig whiskey. Mm -hmm. Again, they're, they're um, well, some of you may disagree with me if you're a whiskey drinker, but I find their smoke is also not so overwhelming. And this one has that sweet, that sweetness. Like a dried, like a... Mm dried stone fruit kind of thing like mm. if you never had a dried longanberry mm, imagine something like a dried plum more to the sweet side less of the tartness you would smell mm. hey, this is good oh that's great all right head back over to the book mm -hmm. and we will head on down to a section that is going to be super fun. Tea curio, tea pets. Yay, tea pets. <laughs> All right, so we're going to dive in. Right. Do tea they have just uh, the reading or do they have our screen too? Don't they see us, but oh, it's all there. All oh, right. So tea. <laughs> what? Now just show you. This is what they see. Oh. All right, here we go, guys. Tea curio functions. It is also called interesting equipment and used to decorate and beautif beautify the tea table. It is the indispensable for quite a lot of people who love tea deeply. Oh, sorry, I was a bit of chunky there myself. Types. Most of tea curio are made of sand fired. There are various styles such as pig, dog, matreya buddha, lad, etc. <laughs> lad. Usage, tea curio shares the mellow and sweet of tea soup while brewing and tasting, which is, kind, which is a kind of fun. And I'll just mm. catch this little section down here too right, before right. I close up. Yeah. It is necessary for tea curio and sand fire to be maintained, boiled with tea soup and cleaned up, cleaned with brush periodically, rubbed with a tea towel, then it will be brighter and have more spirituality. All right, let's roll back up. And you don't say that as spirituality, right? You don't call that just no, spirituality. No, no, that was, that, okay. we'll get there, we'll okay, get there. Okay, but okay. that is definitely something that I was like, oh. Too early. <laughs> yeah. So the function is pretty much okay, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, interesting equipment, uh, kind of don't know what they mean by that, but it's to decorate and beautify the table. Um, and we love them. Those who love tea, love them. I noticed that Cindy is here and I know she has a little cutie called Ms. Otterby or Mrs. Otterby, I think. I can't, Ms. or is it a Mr.? I can't remember, Cindy, but I know it's 
I hope I got it right. I think it's otter bee because it's a little otter with a teacup on his tummy. Yeah, yeah. It's super cute. So um, if you other if if you guys all have favorite tea pets, shoot them up into the chat because this was super fun to share tea pet notes. So right. but mostly the function was fine. Anything missing from the function? I think. Mm, I don't think it's a missing. It's just to mention because it translates this as interesting equipment. Right. It's because of Chinese. Uh, you call that cha chu ju. That's literally translated as a tea, interesting equipment, but um, that's why it's so awkward in English. Right, right. While the tea pad or tea curio, uh, cu curio, cu you curio, said it perfectly. Okay. Mm. Uh, those we call that, uh, if directly translated, it would be tea play. Ah. Cha wan, a play used as a nun, not like a, right. a story play, but. Um, right. Yeah, so uh, just want to point out. No, I was wondering, but we can kind of get over it in English, but it's good to know the background that is. Yeah. So in Chinese, those are tea, um, you call those the first one, cha chu. Cha chu ju. Or you can call that uh, cha wan. Okay. It cha works. wan, uh, tea play, tea fun, or cha chong, tea pad. It's oh. more have a we take we mostly use as a tea pad because it has that sense of a, you know keep your company playfulness playfulness and also need attention right mm. right and it also implies the optionality of it too you don't mm -hmm. have to have that for tea brewing it's mm -hmm. a pet you can have the pet you don't need to have the pet you can still live okay types was um was interesting I just <laughs> your summarize about pet is a very cute a little bit cold right <laughs> if you have pets and you love them I totally get it okay I don't I love pets too. You know, still optional, but not to those who have them, which is just like tea pet. Mm -hmm. See, it's a perfect metaphor. Mm -hmm. Types. So the only thing in types was sandfire. If you're just catching up with us, this is a word that we're coming across frequently in the book. It simply means zisha clay, purple clay. Yeah. Um, and they just call it sandfire, but it, they're usually made of purple clay, just like these two little dudes here, which I think you can see okay. Okay, and so anything else there? Oh, hang on. Yeah, that's it for, and they come in all kinds of shapes. They kind of give a few, but mm -hmm. there's tons of different, you can get deer, and even the picture down here, I'll just show you. Yes. You know, you've got dogs, yes. squirrels, uh, that froggy dragon yeah. kind of thing. It's a rat, like a, like a, in the 12 uh, years of China. That's a what? Mouse, mouse, rat, mouse. Oh, this guy here? Yeah, it's not a squirrel. Oh, it, oh look at the it, tail. It's no, because I thought this was the tail, but I see it's just he's bent and doing like some kind of weird handstand. Yes. Got it. Okay. So that's the ear of the rat. Okay. And squirrel was way cuter though, but you're right. The ears are a little bit wrong for squirrel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Famous uh, ones like a standing pee pee boy. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So the little, I don't want to spoil Cindy's uh, fire. So I'll let her talk okay. about, yeah. about lady ought to be. I thought it was a lady. Okay, so usage I found kind of confusing. Right. You, tea curio shares the mellow and sweet of the tea soup. That doesn't uh, quite um, doesn't quite compute. I kind of know, and probably you guys out there can guess what it means because we probably do this all the time with mm -hmm. our tea pets. But if you're brand new to tea and reading that, it's sort of like, what does that mean? Mm. Um, it's actually it's a, a literal translation of the Chinese uh, version, which. Uh, Simplify to mean that basically tea pads share your drinks, aka we pour those tea liquors over them to season them. So that's what I thought it meant. Oh, this is really nice, huh? It even, when it cools down a bit, the longanberry pops a little bit more and has more of the dried element. Mm. I really like that. But um, especially with a tea like this, I noticed that I thought that meant you share the tea soup with the babies. And I have to say, I'm a little bit greedy. I only share the boiling water and the rinse water. That's it. Yes, yes. So you're, it's Mostly nice to share that. the tea soup too, right? Well, every now and then, if you have a bad tea, you don't want to drink it. <laughs> okay, so you're like me. You're like me. So I hope you guys don't think we're evil, but we're a little bit mm, keeping the tea for the people and saving the rinse water and the uh, boiling water and maybe the less awesome teas for the tea pets. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Or Boom. you know some tea at the end of its tail, you don't want to continue drinking it. Yeah, you're full. Then, yeah, yeah, just don't waste things. You can put it on him and give him a little polish. Mm -hmm. I've been working on these guys as well. I hope you can notice mm, uh, the I shine different. I want to talk different. about this uh, too. 
Yeah, because so the, later uh, in this section in the little blog, we mentioned about uh, yeah, that's right uh, where we are point, actually. Yeah. So yeah, the, so this was pretty good, but the beginning is, and you have to maintain them. Okay, that's clear. Mm -hmm. And it says boiled with tea soup and cleaned with a brush. So that sounds like you pop him in the water and boil him with tea leaves. Is that? Or do, is it just mean pour over? Like I couldn't. You can do pour over initially. It almost because it's also a purple clay zisha. Mm. A lot of them are used uh, uh, are zisha material, so you could use the same way you uh, open up open up like a season season prepare, prepare mm. the the zisha mm. teapot the same way you do with the teapot. Mm. So in one of our videos, we show how to get the zisha teapot ready for right. brewing, which includes a little boil mm -hmm. uh, a step, which right. you can use for teapot tea as, well. as well. But it's not like a mandatory. And um, so basically, it's uh, talking about using hot water and like boiling water, the hot, super hot liquor to nourish the, the clay. clay. Mm. Right, and use the brush to clean it to make sure there's no like a dust or tea leaves on top of it right, to make right. sure the color is seasoned evenly. And uh, again, mentioned about uh, using tea towel to rub, massage it. Mm -hmm. So it has a nice polish. And later on, even use bare hands to clean bare hands to give mm -hmm. it that that's the spiritual spirituality thing. It's a, a direct translation of Chinese. We call that yu ling xing. It's a yu ling xing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the same, um, how should I say, a lot of things when it's, uh, especially those who absorbs oil or human, like it changes, like right. wood, like jade, jade. like mm. zisha. Got the it. different people, if you have identical, uh, say, teapot, and five years later, different people, right. maybe could be different tea, could be like the same tea or just different people. They will come up with a different color, not like a hugely green and blue, right, but right. the tinge will be a little the, bit the to the red The patina will be side. different yes, person yes. to person. So with two pieces of identical white jade, mm. this would be really obvious because yes. there's not as much variable. Like tea, we've got, well, what did you use for the tea? What's yes, the teas that yes. you had over there? Jade will be really but obvious. One might actually. be a little bit more to the yellow, one might be pure white mm, or something. Some might be dull mm. or some. So that's, so what it really means is the patina, but Almost more than just the patina, right, the unique there? patina of your of help you know of your because of your care this kind of right what it's right to. so it's mm. that's very cool so that's one of the things i
Oh. Go back over. Is this better, guys? Sorry about that. I think it was when I pressed the button. Oh no, we had a whole bunch of time with no sound. Oh. It was when I. It was pretty much when we switched over, though. So we just went over right. the comments, guys. Um, just to let if you can let us know where we missed. Yeah, well, kind of where we left off. Right. Um, we'll pick it up from there. Um, mm -hmm. Because if it was just as we were heading to the comments, we should be all right. I think I know what happened. This was under and I touched it too. Okay, okay. Yes, we're back. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're so just, we will keep a more close eye to uh, yeah, this all little, the comments section. Yeah, this little guy here. Right, right. It, oh, it's hard to see because it's covered when the book is there. Ah, uh, okay. Right. I have to have the book up so I couldn't see the mic. Um, so yeah, they're just, we're just waiting for a comment to come in Right. last few minutes. So mostly I think that was the and comments. And mostly comments, right? Hopefully. We were just heading out okay. when I reached over. Have a sip of tea to calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm kind of bummed. So we covered the, um, we went over the sort of the page, mm. which you guys could see. Um, can you review what we missed? Yeah, we're trying to figure out where we mm. dropped out after switch from book back to you. Right. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Back we... to us. Oh, so did you guys hear the, the tea pet? No, they wouldn't have heard that. No, eh? that's when we switch and get lost. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mostly comments, she thinks. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit slow because it takes several seconds for our question to get out to them. Right, right. But I think they got all the content and missed some of the comments and maybe some of the part about the tea pet. Um, you hear this? Taking care of the tea pets. Don't, don't. Let me know. No? That's where you were. Ah. Okay, so. Okay, back. <laughs> oh right, because I again. switched so they could see the tea pets, and that's oh, when I gaffed okay. the sound. Just wanted you to. Sh My brain is so slow. I was, hey, why is that going further? Okay, here, here we go. So this is two tea pets. This is the our oldest one. Uh, since we started the business, we had this. So this is like five, six years old, and um, this one is. Uh, really recently we start to really use that a mm -hmm. couple of months so you can see the color difference of both and uh, this one doesn't have any like a real oil or anything on it it's uh, that's that luster comes from years of yeah, um, cultivating. tea soup and, tea soup and, and, and wiping and, uh, and just wiping cultivating and, uh, it, yeah. rubbing and this one feels uh, still a little quite dull and uh but he's made huge leaps forward in absolutely the last few weeks, and the but... texture feels a little rougher mm. compared to this one so we're trying to get them synced hopefully Try and the color color difference you see this is uh, slightly redder than this more yeah. dark one i don't know if they caught the spirituality comment oh, but right. uh, i think they might have caught just the tail end of that but that's sort of the what that kind of means is more that unique patina that the that the clay develops with mm. your individual care. So if if Jem were to care for one for years and years, and I cared for one, and we did exactly the same things to it, they would still come out different, different mm. hues, different hues tones, and colors, and mm. stuff. And uh, just a personal experience, awesome. like what we got a scary question from Cindy: Do your pets have names? <laughs> they don't. Oh, but we have a good reason. Because they're monks, they, they prefer to not be named because it's immodest. Totally made that up on the fly. Pretty good, right? All right. I was like, what? But he was winking at me. I was like, huh? We have good reasons? I didn't know. I feel like we have to have a reason to not name our pets. We're a little bit, like we said with the liquor. We're, we're going to call dog. Hey, dog. Mm, yeah, we're, yeah, probably. I don't know. Oh boy. Okay, so I'm glad the sound is back. Sorry about that glitch, guys. Right. Uh, work in progress. Oh, they didn't uh, hear the spe spirituality. Perfect. So I think those were the most important things because that was mm. directly related to a word in the book. It's more of a like a person personal mm -hmm. mark on your own teapad. Yeah. Like my mom, she is really good with jade. 
She played Jade for like a half a year or something. The same Jade we did that. Right. Mine is, I somehow very dull. Hers is very bright. Yeah. So that's good. I think we've got everything covered then. So we'll head on to the next section. Mm -hmm. I, oh, did we finish the comments though? Mm, Let's make bad sure. Bad excuse. They need Chinese names. Oh, we got, Ooh, okay. we're getting called out on our, we're, we're pretty bad tea pet parents. <laughs> yes, yes. You're pretty good. He's good. I'm the real bad one. I just uh, say, okay, we got to rub it. So I ask him to rub it. Yeah, I take care. I do the, 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 the Ooh, lot of the water. And, okay, okay. This is what I just uh, found out a couple of days ago. Okay. So this guy, you can see the, the. <laughs> The hand and the feet. Yeah, it's a little hard with him because he's supposed to have a blue little jacket, a robe on mm. that comes to his wrists. But right. he's getting so worn out, it's, he's starting right. to get naked. But yeah, he has little clay hands and feet showing. I never rub it. When I rub it, I only did the head because it's the big section. No. Then the other day I found he them. was rubbing the little foot. The little foot yeah, and the Yeah, you got hands. it right. You got to give them a little, right? Give them a little... Rub, rub, and then, then this is pretty grisly. This could be trauma, traumatic for some, but I just rub his head <laughs> like that. And uh, usually, obviously, he's wet. He's got some tea liquor normally when I do right. that. But um, that's basically what you do, and it's kind of relaxing. After as you sip the tea, you can pick mm. them up, give them a rub if you're into the longer steepings. Mm. Mm. But yeah, anywhere where you see uh, the the shy should supposedly to give it a rub. Okay, good job, okay. Thanks. And Josh, but Josh is with us. He said they're supposed to have names. Mine don't, LOL. So, okay, thanks, Josh. <laughs> thanks for backing us up. It seems that Canadians are heartless. And that's the takeaway. <laughs> well, and you're kind of a pseudo Canadian because you're here in Canada. Yeah, I think you had a heart until you got here. Okay. All right, pull the table in. Little earthquake, guys. This is really live, okay? We're keeping it real. We're keeping it real for you guys. Okay, that's how you know we're authentic. So we're going back to the book and we're on to the cup saucer. I'll tuck that right up there and we will get on with it. Mm -hmm. Cup saucer. It is also called cup cushion, which is used to settle cups, fragrant smelling cups, and in case that the water in the cup or bottom of cup wet the table. It can also prevent the abrasion of tea sets. Types. The most common... Uh, the most, most of the cup saucers are made of porcelain, sand-fired pottery, wood, and bamboo, etc. It could be used with Ping Ming cup or used optionally. Usage. Promptly clean the cushion after being used, being aired or dried up if it is made of wood or bamboo. Okay, and that's the section. Mm. So pretty short and sweet, but it is, it's a saucer, right? So... Yes. Uh, again, I think uh, I feel like uh, there's nothing missing just the in terms of name because there those are T terms. Mm. That's why it's uh, tricky to translate. So Bei Tuo uh, Cup Saucer and uh, also known as a Bei Dian and which can be like a cup pad. Right. Like mm. that kind of flavor. That's why he, he called it uh, she call that a cup cushion? Which yeah, I which think? doesn't really translate. I feel like cushion has to be soft and That's cushion. right, that's right. We would never call something under a porcelain teacup a cushion. Right. Unless it was a cushion, in which case we would say, hey, what are you doing with that teacup? It's going to fall over. <laughs> okay. So that's a bit of a weird one. But other than that, the function was pretty okay. Um, cup cushion mm -hmm. was just weird. Um, cup tray. Mm -hmm. was a bit that could work but trays are pretty big usually for us like the size of okay. a tea tray right right so we would stick with saucers a pretty flexible word in english yeah. goes under a cup um it can go yeah. under other stuff too um, so i think that works one thing though and abrasion was a bit weird i have to say oh why well I never thought, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I never thought of a saucer as preventing quote-unquote abrasion. Abrasion is like wearing out from rubbing. Like, yes. like his jacket is getting lost because of right. abrasion, right? Probably from my vigorous rub. No, I don't think so. It's just for... They wear out too. Right, right. It's just a tea liquor color, I thought. Like, I get oh. that dull. It's not gone. The texture, that grippy texture really gets the tea liquor on it, no? Let's go back to saucers. Okay. 
<laughs> We're going to have a talk about that. I'm pretty sure it's going. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just want to mention, because in uh, Western tea cup set, it comes with a saucer and maybe a spoon, oh. right? Here, here is a slight difference when you're using that. This is like, a, this is not a, a traditional Chinese tasting cup. It's more like a coffee cup mm -hmm. or uh, like a, a mug, it's a mini mug. Right, right. So there's not a fully. So in drinking Chinese tea, when nice. you have a saucer and a cup, you don't have to, or usually we don't pick up the whole thing. Like in the, uh, the uh, right, sorry, in the function parts, it was talking about the, the majorly two function. One is abrasion, prevent abrasion. Second is prevent the table to get wet. So mm. in which case you can just pick up the tasting cup, a drink from that, put it down. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's because uh, in the Western tea cup, usually you pick up the whole saucer, you hold a right. saucer, and you drink. But yeah. Like you know this. what? I wasn't even thinking of these guys. Right. We wouldn't call this a saucer. Huh? What no. is that? This is a. What would you guys call that? It's just something we put our not. Don't say. A pe don't say a piece of wood. Yeah. It's just something. <laughs> let me go over to the um. Piece of wood. The uh, tea table. So, so this guy here, we just put the cup on it like so. Mm. Um, would you call? I don't think that's a saucer because a saucer is usually like matched. And I kind of forgot about there are regular pads, like the. Now I'm a bit stuck. I'm gonna reach out to the community for some help here. Mm. Coaster. coaster. Oh, oh yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Course. Coaster. Total brain fart. Yes. Thank you guys. So mm. cup coaster. Right, yes. right, right. Yes, that's more what we would call it rather than saucer. Right. So we'll come back up here. Yeah, it's a coaster. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that coaster. would be the word for the generic word for it. Saucer is a bit more like this. Oh, you don't have a saucer for the guy no. one today, but so saucer has to be matching. Coaster can be random. A saucer is more strict in the form of a mini plate that fits the little the cup or the whatever. The guy one has a saucer too, right? Uh, oh. So yeah, it, and it typically yeah they match. I think they they match. But this is more of a cup coaster. Yes. Okay. Thanks, guys. I was totally blanking on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So function, though, other than that is good. And abrasion. Yeah. Now I get it. Now that I was totally, when I was thinking about this, I was locked into coaster because of the, um, or saucer, sorry, not coaster, because of this word. It kind of threw me into that specific okay. mindset. Okay. Should be coaster. Yes. Uh, sorry. Cup coaster is more. Yep. So anything that basically lays the surface there. Yeah. You could use a piece of felt or anything mm. just to kind of, and yes, it does make sure that, and some of the tea tables are made of ink stone. Mm -hmm. So there would be more abrasion, especially if you had a clay cup, you might not want it to mark the table or vice versa, mark your cup. Yeah. Because, uh, mm. just, uh, in general glass, you don't feel that with, mm. uh, 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 porcelain, it's, it's not because you put that down really hard. Sometimes mm. just the angle or just the strength yep. at the, the perfect, you could have a little chip or something. Right. Yes, could get chipped and also make that, sometimes it makes that awful sound. E. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> e. E. It's not, it's much more awful than that. E. So, um, oh, don't make fun of me. Okay. But then types, um, I think types and usage were both pretty, let me come back to the book since we're back there. So types, pretty good. Uh, made of porcelain, sand fire, as we said, can be zisha, pottery, wood, as we showed you ours. Uh, we made ours with the little logo on them, mm -hmm. made of wood. Ash, no, apple, apple, apple. wood to be precise, mm -hmm. bamboo and can be used with pinging or optionally. Mm. You don't need them for, to say, and usage, per, pretty good. Just clean them. Right. We won't continue to tea pads since uh, they're kind of in the same yes. family. Yes, so moving on to tea pad. Right. Okay, I gotta flip into my notes here. All right, tea pad. It is also called pot saucer, especially used for setting pots. It can undertake the boiling water coming out of the teapot and make the table clean types. There are sand fired and porcelain tea pads, which mm. are used with pots that are in the same texture. It can also used optionally. There are mono layer and double layer. Most of them are round and have some decorations. Mm -hmm. Usage. 
It is better to put a cloth cushion between the sand fired pot and pot saucer in order to prevent friction. Mm. And that's that. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with the translation. Like, not say perfect, but I think it's understandable. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, again, I don't know if it was me, but at first I couldn't, um, when they called teapot a pot saucer, um, oh, yeah, teapot again, saucer, saucer, it kind of threw me off, but then I realized it's just, um, that's, in this section, I actually realized this is like, we have a piece of loofah that we use. So that protects our teapot. Yes, oh, good, we have it right that's, here. That's not oh. what this is. Oh. That's not what this is talking about. Oh. Okay. I didn't know it's so confusing. Oh, you see, I if I read it, I was either. like, oh, that's pretty good. I thought... It, but right, this doesn't keep the table. Ooh. Oh no, this is the one they recommend between the pad and the pot. That's right. Is the loofah. Right. Okay. So, so what so. they're talking about, I think they can see me, is this guy that I mm -hmm. put underneath. Here, high tech. <laughs> that I put... Oh, I thought you would face that. but Okay. You want the other one? I don't know. I'm pro. Whichever camera you put on, I shift that. Ooh, okay, that's good. That's good. That's very handsome. Okay, so this one, uh, I remove the saucer of the guy one, just so it fits and it's the same color. Seem frozen now. Oh boy. See frozen? Front camera. Okay, front camera. I said front camera. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, yep. Uh, no more fancy stuff today. Today is not a tech Today day. is not fancy day. Ew, sorry. So this... <laughs> I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are. <laughs> so this is uh, what this uh, section is talking about. In Chinese, this is called Hu Chen. Hu Chen uh, means some as uh, the base to put teapot but you mm -hmm. can also put a uh, guy one or other brewing vessels and or also known also called as a hu tuo. also has this word in chinese also have the sense that is a base for putting something on it so it's a it's a um, special like a tea turn so it's a little bit hard to translate that's why she was trying to say tea pad or tea mm -hmm. pot saucer but that's what it is. So this is a dry brew um, yeah. setup you will use. If you have tea pot, uh, sorry, sorry, tea table, you wouldn't need this. Right. But mm. if you don't, they're very handy and a mm. quick way to get started with your teapot or your guy one. Right. And we can show them the on the page. The, the my style is just a simple bowl. If you see a really beautiful plate with a little bit of uh, curved edge to hold a little water, that's that could be used as a uh, uh, <clears throat> this tea pad as well. This tea one, pad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one uh, the in the picture is a double layered. Those holes which provides a little drainage. It doesn't store as much water as the tea table, but it still oh. stores a little bit of water. You can then right. then there's a hole somewhere around the edge. You can just drain it. Yeah, you covered my question in types. They talk about a double layer, and I was like, what is that? Like, I thought it meant with a removable tray, more ah. like a tea table, but it just means that it... So that it, here, what I have is single mono layer. Yeah. And in the picture, what you said, uh, see where the holes are double layer. Right. Mm. So that makes sense now. That was my only question in types. And uh, right, and in the usage, they talk about the little pads you might put in between. Right. So I have a two here that I use daily. Um, with the guy one, I'm a <laughs> slightly more sloppy. So I sometimes right. don't put stuff. With the teapot, I, I always put a pad. Just to prevent those yes. maybe could happen chip. You yes, because you never know. It's not like a, I notice with a chip, it doesn't happen because I actually drop it or something. It's just I didn't notice I chipped. It's just bad luck. Yeah. So this is a loofah. It looks super black. It's because the tea liquor stain. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it starts, it's a uh, white. Yeah. So uh, that's a soft and soft but firm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it won't scratch the tea pot. Mm -hmm. This one is leather, hard leather. So also uh, gentle. 
but it's still pretty firm. So you don't want something too cushiony.、Mm-hmm. Then you have the chance of a spill and、uh, you know wobbly in the teapot. That's right. All right. So that pretty much covers the tea pot saucer, the tea pad. Oh, the saucer ish,、mm-hmm. coaster ish thing. Let's head out.、Uh, let's go back over to、okay. the comments. So that's where we were. We got back on track from the sound getting lost.、Mm. The spirituality. Bathe. We bathe our. Some.、Uh, Josh. Cindy said that we bathe our pets, so we're good parents. <laughs> um, tray is appropriate too. There are small trays. Coaster. coaster、mm-hmm. yes. Josh says it's coaster. a coaster. Coaster.、Mm. Right. That's what she. Yeah. That, in the book, it was called a cushion. cushion. So it's a coaster. And D's versified says cushion can be used with under a teapot in a tea boat as well. Yeah, I think we just、mm. covered that. This would kind of be more like the、uh, has more cushion, cushion flavor. Right. Right. Just to give it padding to prevent chipping. That limits the abrasiveness. Yeah, agreed. Josh says, "Oh, so that ceramic teapot coaster is what I've always been referring to as a tea boat." Goodness, no wonder I had、mm. so much、uh, trouble learning the terms when I was starting all that time ago. Yeah, there's a lot of different terms, and who, you know, it's hard to say. Like, I I think of a tea boat as a small tea tray, but、uh, who's to say、right. you're wrong for thinking of a tea boat as one of these guys? Because it、right. does. Also hold water. Yeah, it's tricky because it's、uh, not like uh, uh, the tea in the Chinese tea to the English word is not professionally translated.、Mm. It's all people like us who know some、uh, Chinese, know some English translate. Some people's approach is to word by word direct translation.、Mm-hmm. Some people's approach is by its function or stuff like that. That's why it's a、uh, Yeah, and、uh, I think worst case,、um, it might just be safe to just clarify if you're not sure、mm. if it's going to make an important、Always、difference、says. in how、yeah. you say brew your tea or something.、Yeah. Just want to get all the information you can. And、um, yeah, Jan says these tea pads can look really nice. I guess、um, he liked the look of the、uh, the ceramic one.、Mm. And Diversify said perhaps tea pads are different from tea boats. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of ambivalent. I find tea boat is like tea tea table or tea tray, and tea pad are kind of clearly different. Boat is kind of, you know, not not none of these are boat. You don't get in with and paddle any of these anywhere. Okay. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I never boat was the last term、For、I came me, across. For me, I again, I'm a you know second language. I don't I don't know if I my feeling about these two words. Is right, but I feel like a boat gave me more depth.、So、I feel like it got a curve、right. a little bit deeper, where、right. pat is a flatter feeling thing. Right.、Mm-hmm. Um, sure. But honestly, there are so many like styles and stuff. It's really hard to say like a wrong. There's no.、Right. There's no tea police. You, yeah,、right? it's basically what you choose to, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm.、Uh, you know, clarify is important. It looks. It looks that the teapot pad is smaller than the tea boat.、Mm, seems so. Yeah, and like Jen said, it feels. I feel like you're right. A boat should have kind of that kind of shape, which always make me think of a tea table. And Cindy says、okay. one of my teapots came with a loofah pad, and I really wasn't sure、uh, if it was for cleaning the teapot or placing or placing it on. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, I'm glad we could help. Yeah, it's a little tea cushion for you. <laughs> Or a pot cushion.、Mm. Yes, tea boat is a crazy name.、Mm. Agree, young. A little bit fun though. If you wanna, I'm a. I like to canoe, so a little bit fun. <laughs> tea canoe. <laughs> tea canoe. Here、yeah. we go. All right, heading back to the book.、Mm. And we're moving on to the、uh, lid saucer. So this is an interesting one. Lid saucer. It is used for placing the lid while brewing tea. It can prevent the lid from touching the table and reducing the friction of the lid.、Mm-hmm. There types. There are various types of lid saucers, such as sandfire steak shapes, small lotus bed, or little porcelain plates. Usage. It will be more graceful to use a lid saucer. However, it must be cleaned right after being used, or it will be inelegant to see to. To see tea stain. 
clean your lid saucers. Right, right. I think this is pretty... The only thing that wasn't immediately clear was mm -hmm. the, the word lid saucer. But this picture right next to it mm -hmm. kind of gave it away for me. So I realized, okay, this is a little doodad, a little trinket to put your teapot lid on top of while you're putting the tea in or while you're pouring the water into it. Here, I'll grab the baby. You grab the lid. So this baby right now sits on my lid saucer. Yeah. Lid saucer is something... Stand, I think, would be clear for us, like lid stand. Oh, lid stand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, unless it stand. unless it okay. was a little plate, then I would call it a uh, lid saucer. You know, right. four matters, right? You uh, there are like a little plate ones, yeah. Yeah, sure. but mostly are this kind of like a, what you see on a picture is mm -hmm. those little stump, uh, tree trunkish, uh, uh, thing. See if there's and any, uh, what I have here is. Uh, Again, it's basically if you have anything that of that shape, you can use a lot of tea pads. Like a tea things can be multi-purpose. It could be a a piece of a plate, a plate that you really like, but doesn't fit in your, uh, you know, the, in your the collection, collection or, or something. Or it's an awkward shape for yeah, your cupboard. Yeah, then you, you know? use that for. We're not practical for dishes. Then you use that for tea. Like uh, yeah. you can be really imaginative have fun. and yeah, yeah imaginative yeah. with this. So this one is what I use as a tea lid. Uh, you probably notice I don't use that as often. I'm the lid on. Um, if I'm uh, doing a beautiful like a tea display, like or performance, I will be more uh, paying attention. But in daily usage, I find myself don't use that often. But that's mm -hmm. totally just a personal. This one actually is uh, something else. It's not a uh, official. Uh, it's been repurposed. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a, actually this one, this thing. How uh -huh. do you call that in English? A thumb ring. Thumb ring, but uh, in Chinese we call that banzhi. You're kidding. That's a really a thumb ring. Yeah, not for guys. Maybe yours and it would be better. Oh, it's a guy thumb ring. It's still it's a little big. Like what am I? It's pretty big. Yeah. Uh. But do you know the function? So the function no. of uh, thumb ring is a, uh, for archery. Archer? Uh -huh. Archery? 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 The bow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yes. yeah. I'm, I'm just in a played, state of disbelief. Yeah, that uh, left hand or right hand, I forget. I'm not a pro in uh, archery, but that's to pr protect them. That's how the tradition comes from. Uh, Probably, I think la probably to the, pull the pull is on this finger. I feel probably like it might snap their one. thumb. I don't know. That. Anyway, this one is the uh, archery, so it comes from Qin, uh, like uh, those uh, nomads wow. culture, uh, Qin dynasty or nomads people. So they still keep that, but later on they don't oh do gosh. as much of on the horse and stuff. But keep this, then you could have jade, you could have uh, many stuff. This one have little paintings on that, and of course I don't wear them, so I use that as a. Yeah, it may, baby now it's a tea, a tea baby <laughs> stool or a teapot lid holder or a lid saucer, a lid holder, lid stand. Mm. There we go. Lid stand. So a few comments. Let's catch up here. Okay. Oh, Josh says, oh, it wasn't exactly me who called those tea boats. I've seen a number of sellers call those. Yeah, I've, no, I've noticed that too. Tea trays is raised a bit. A small ceramic trays with raised raised a bit of boat. I guess it comes from gravy boat. Hmm, maybe. Yeah, could be a carryover from gravy boat. Josh says the old-fashioned term for certain pieces of dishware. Mm. Oh. I I don't exactly have one, so I've never ref had to refer to one out loud before. Haha. <laughs> That's my secret for a lot of teaware. That if I didn't have, if I don't have one. I don't need to know perfectly what it's called. Yeah, true enough. And Josh, uh, Jan says to Josh, yes, I also know a tea boat name from teaware sellers. Mm. Mm. And Josh says, oh, smiling. Diversified says, yes, of course, I have one. I have one definite tea boat and it holds cups, cups. Teapot, teapot and fair cup. cup. The lid drains to the bowl underneath. The, lid, the liquid, the liquid drains, drains to the bowl underneath. Drains. Okay. Right. That's more to what we said er, earlier, more like a tea table, what we call mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm and wondering what it's made bowl. of, your tea bowl. Mm -hmm. Is it a, like a wooden one with a tray um, underneath? 
Um, I'm loving the double usage of the thumb ring. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's handy for us too. I had no idea that archery thing is crazy. So obviously these mo these modern ceramic and jade ones are pure backward of the, they had to be leather or wood or something when you're really shooting a real bow, right? Start with the leather, I thought. Probably, yeah. Mm. Then they uh, change, and the shape is not straight. They have a little curl and stuff. Oh, wow. And it's uh, some useful uh, accessory become a garment. Garment? Decoration? Like, right, it's a useful... <laughs> like now it's a purely just... Purely decorative, right. Yes. At all times to show off, like, you know. Ha, <laughs> you know, it says, hmm, gravy boat. Yes, tea boat have kind of spout or how to describe it you might be right yeah and Josh says I have a number of pot lid holders I made from bamboo bamboo stock and glasses I bought from restaurant supply stores in Toronto Chinatown nice mm. oh little little glasses would be perfect too certain like really small like shot size glasses right right t-boat is ceramic oh okay mm. this is the one he was talking about that drains to a right. well below cool yeah, there's definitely tons of new things out there. Like it's really hard to define that in a certain yeah type, yeah it's not so stretched shape. right right. All right, okay. so moving on to an accessory knife. we all know and love the puar knife. It is functions. It is also called tea knife, which is used to pry up the solid tea. It is widely used among puar tea. It is a special tool for brewing the solid tea. Types. The materials are stainless steel, ox horn, and bone, etc. Mm -hmm. Selections. It is better to choose the blunt ones in order to prevent breaking the solid tea. And finally, usage. Mm -hmm. One. Flat in the knife to the solid tea. Then slowly pry up, fetch with thumb. Two. Solid tea is usually tight enough. Be careful while prying in case of being hurt by the knife. Mm -hmm. All right. So there is a tea knife. I'm going in big. Tea knife. So that's mm, ours. I guess everybody. It's got the sharpness of a, of a letter opener. So it's very mm. blunt on the edges. Yeah. Only the point is a little bit sharp, not even that sharp. And it is handy because it won't, it'll, not won't, but it'll be less likely to um, cut the leaves, which you don't want when you're, yes. when you're trying to break your pressed tea. Yeah, that's why in general we we prefer this uh, blade-shaped uh, th uh, pour knife than the pure like a pick, like a needle-shaped one. Right, like the one shown is very similar to ours. It's sort yes. of like a letter opener. Yeah, yeah, because uh, what as this is uh, this mentioned is basically you put the tea pour knife in the cake. Mm. Carefully, uh, uh, how should I, let me organize my word, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think to say that the ultimate purpose is to break up a chunk of the tea uh, while minimize the breakage of the right. leaf. So uh, that that's why it's important of the way you use it, yeah. which also means uh, the 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 tool you use. With needles, you don't reach needle shape, you don't have much... Um, option of a wiggle up and down to slowly break the yeah, tea right like it, as it's naturally break down yeah cause because it's gonna it's pierce needle. in it's gonna yeah it's gonna slice its own path this, because if you just slide mm, uh, put that in as a needle shape there's no uh, you don't follow the natural fissures and and weak points of the tea how should i say you cannot do this movement of the tea. wiggle this a wiggle uh, okay mm. yeah wiggle you cannot wiggle much to help because it's just one single narrow point in. Right, right. Then it's a lot oh, of Oh, I see breaking. what you're saying. I was going to kind of oh, elaborate too. I couldn't too. say that as well. I, I, um, I do most of the breaking. So right. yeah, and at first I was really frustrated by this pretty dull point because it doesn't just slice in easily and I was trying to force it in with a lot of pressure. But it turns out the better way is to just like just gently up and down and side up and down and and side side just gently wiggle it and the tea will find its spot where it wants to break and mm -hmm. once i get it in about maybe this deep or so and now if i turn this way little. it will actually lift off the tea where it will, where it was naturally wanting to separate yes 
And like she said, with the thumb on top, I just give it a twist and it comes up as a nice, almost a coin shape if I do a good job. Right. And of right. course, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes you just get a It's hard. A leaf. It, it depends on the press too. Oh, big time. Like a, in here, you call that a solid tea, but it means a pressed uh, Press tea, tea, yeah. And as you guys know, they're not all created equal. You've got some that are very loose and some that are like crazy, crazy is tight. The, hard, the hardest. Zhuan Zhuan Tuo. <laughs> Zhuan Tuo cake. You feel like the three words doesn't Zhuan belong together? Mm. Zhuan Tuo Bing. Zhuan, oh, brick. Tuo. Mm. But Zhuan you missed, brick. You missed the tuo. actual super hardest one of them all, it's which I don't know how to say log in Chinese, but it is the Qianliang ah, right. Qian Qian Cha log. If you've ever seen them right. press that. Well, just to say, this is a puar knife. Right. That's why I was more mm. staying on the puar Oh, realm. good point. Good point. Well, Right, yeah. Uh, Maybe just use a but saw just with those. Any, yes, any hard pressed mm. tea, it's uh, just be careful when using that. Yeah. We had uh, somebody who break that and had to go to emergency room and stitch up. Oh yeah, yeah. Be careful. Don't ideally don't put your non knife hand in front of the knife. Keep it mm. off to the side. So, and that's the only spot. Everything here was pretty readable, mm -hmm. um, except of course, I wanted to uh, emphasize in, in usage step two, they have the be careful, mm -hmm. uh, the be careful disclaimer that cannot be overemphasized because you gotta be careful when mm -hmm. you're breaking up tea. And I did wanna point out, uh, similar with the, um, uh, we have actually a video on how to, if you got a really tough tea mm. that's too crazy with a knife, um, we did a video on how to break a tough puar um, and loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, safely. Um, yeah, so I'm just taking notes because we last week we referred to so much stuff we actually had trouble remembering it all. So now I'm writing them down. Great. So yeah. All right, so let's head on to the, I wanted to comment about the tea we're, I don't, not tracking the infusions at all, but this is still so full of flavor and I, the dried longanberry is really sitting well with me. I maybe because it's autumn. It's such a lovely. It's a beautiful sunny day out, but it's getting cool up here. Mm, but it's not a sweet tea. Not at all. No, the, it's really dried longanberry. Right? Yes. You've got that really. Like you have sweet on teas in the nose, but mm -hmm. not when you taste it. Yeah, yeah, and not in the liquor. Like you get with a cumin or something, you've got that sweet in the liquor. This and one is... it still has that. A lingering, gentle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. prominent smoke. Right. It's really pleasant. That's probably what makes it so autumny for me. It's like a little, a little curl, a wisp of smoke coming out of a brick cottage or something or a, yes, a wood yes. cabin. Mm. Mm. Really nice. All right, guys, down to the humble water basin. Mm. And then we'll circle back for a comment. A right. comment Maybe break. we can finish this page because they are both water basin. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a double water basin section funny. coming up. Mm. Yeah, that kind of made me laugh too. Okay, so we'll just do the whole page. Water basin. While brewing, use a plastic, a plastic tube to educe the water from the from tea plate. It is used to store the wastewater and tea stain. Types. It is generally made of bamboo, wood, plastic, and stainless steel. Usage. One, there is a sieve with a long hole with a sorry with a hole in the upper side to separate the tea stain. There is also a round nozzle at the sieve layer connected to the tube to flow the wastewater into the barrel. Two, it is important to note that clean up wastewater in the bucket so as to avoid legacy tea stains. Water basin part two. Functions. It is also called water basin or waste water basin. It is used to store the boiling water or tea stain while brewing. The function of it is equivalent to the water basin or tea plate. Types. There are porcelain and pottery basins. Usage. One, it can be easily and conveniently used to hold the boiling water and stain instead of tea trays and water basin. And two, because of limited capacity, the water basin should be cleaned in time. Okay, so back to Water Basin 1 for the little breakdown. Um, so in this section in general, I had mm -hmm. no idea what they mean by tea stain. Is this tea, tea soaked water? Is it the leaf? 
No. Uh, the leaf, yes. Okay. That's what they meant. The, here, the tea stain, how it was uh, uh, said in English was very confusing. Because mm. they just... Uh, so, tea stain is the color that stains, like the, the residue of a tea liquor that left the stain, which mm -hmm. probably is what you guys are thinking already. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, some portion of this uh, uh, section, they mentioned tea stain as a tea waste tea leaves like right. finish the tea leaves right. that spent you were, leaf. yes a spent leaf that you're about to dump and ah. i think this picture shows a perfect uh, demonstration of the i call that waste water bucket because mm -hmm. it's more of a bucket it's literally right. like you would see as a bucket shape yeah and it's not part of your beautiful setup this is no. kind of tucked out of sight yes underneath mm. the tea the whole table the drainage the hose goes there uh, this is a plastic build. We don't have this because we cannot find anything like that here. Mm, very but specific. It, it's very specific. Uh, the holes, as you can see on the picture, the can you highlight this part? Yeah, the Perfect. little yes. the hose input is right yeah, here. This is really hose. specialized. That means it's for water only. Mm. So on the tea table, you get the water drained uh, to this bucket. Yeah. While that the top, like a sifted uh, surface. This here is yes. strainer surface. Yes, strainer surface. Mm. Thank you. No, oh, it's not um, official. Just this is fancy. I wish our bucket had that. Right. So when you are done your tea, you don't have to leave and uh, uh, dump that in the garbage. Of course you can, mm. but uh, you can choose to just uh, dump that directly in the bucket, and the surface will be the leaf and uh, the residue water in the tea will just go just down fall through to your yeah, bucket yeah. and when you clean just uh, throw out the leaves and uh, dump the bucket because mm -hmm. uh, if you just uh, dump directly in the bucket you could plug the toilet or something mm -hmm. that kind of a uh, thoughtful little design or for us we th we put that water to the garden so we mm. can't have it full of leaves but it would be nice if it was strained out mm. so okay and then in the other um the rest of it was was pretty okay. It's basically a bin. Mm -hmm. um, tea plate, yeah. And they mention uh, that it catches the water from the tea plate. So that's kind of the tea table, tea whichever bowl, tea, right? Whatever. Those things we were previous th that have drainage included. The one, mm -hmm. not the ones that fill up and need their own draining. Mm -hmm. um, and usage again. There was the. Um, the tea stain aspect, and we've talked about the sieve function, how it can, these, this one filters the leaf, which I totally love. I wonder if anybody has one of those. That would be cool. Um, I've always wanted a tea bucket with a sieve. <laughs> Simple needs for me. Um, and what is it? Clean? That's your next uh, oh, person. Again. I wanted to ask people, this one says it's important to clean it up to avoid legacy tea stains so like to me that's not the problem at all <laughs> old tea leaf is the last of my problem in the bucket the problem for me is if i forget about it long enough it overflows and it's a little bit negligent we have a big tea bucket mm. but every now and then you look down and you're like you're within one inch of the top yeah, and you have yeah. to do an emergency evacuation yeah so yeah. i'm just was going to ask if anybody ever had that where your waste bucket kind of, you're just into the session, or maybe you've been into like dozens of sessions and you're just forgetting about it. It's out of sight, right? It's easy yeah. to forget. Did it ever overflow on you? To me, that's <laughs> the, the risk. That is the risk. But I guess also you don't want your leaf to go funky. Right. Okay, water basin part two. Mm -hmm. um, this one was a bit weird because to store boiling water, that's really like sound like a kettle to me. Mm -hmm. But I think it means just to put, get rid of like used hot water, like your rinse water and stuff like that. And of course, tea stain we figured out is, uh, is spent leaf. So this is the, uh, and this feels more like a dry brew setup bowl. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Even though they called it That's water exactly basin. That's exactly it. Okay, so this is the water basin. Oh, hello. Tea bowl. Okay, you can see the, the size. Does that hold you? the size yeah and they can still see the guy one down below so right, they've got a bit right. of a reference so it's a bowl uh, again you can use any bowl you feel like a match your set it doesn't have to be something special this one sometimes i use that to, to display flowers as well for the tea setup mm -hmm. multiple purpose so the difference between these two uh water 
basin is one is more of a bucket that put uh, away uh, ideally concealed out of sight mm -hmm. while this kind of a water i call that water a uh, wastewater bowl mm -hmm. ish stuff is okay to be on the table mm -hmm. and mostly used for dry brew right mm. okay right so i think that's what is this yeah so and basically that's what they're kind of saying here is that that's that's your dry brew vessel mm -hmm. so yeah that's great. For a lot of accessories, the key message about the usage is to clean them on time. <laughs> right. Yeah, you right. don't want to uh, uh, stain is one thing and also hygiene because the tea is quite nutritious. If they just keep growing, growing, there would be mold spot or right. something. Right. So that's why hygiene. All right. So let's catch up with the comments a little bit. Mm. Yeah, here we go. We're right up here at the top. I am loving the double usage of the thumb ring. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And Jan says, gravy boat. Oh, we already were there. Spout. Tea boat is ceramic. Josh says, love, re love repurposing things for tea mm. and, ref and refinishing them too. Sanding them down, oiling them, lacquering, staining, reshaping them. Yeah, just mm. basically make it work for... For, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that's sort of on the same vibe as sort of how we care for tea pets. It's fun to care for stuff and make mm. it work for your tea setup. Jan says, my favorite tea tool. Do you want to finish that? I'm about mm. to pour that oh, out. Oh, sure. Mm. Jan says, my favorite tea tool. I like make portions from Puar tea cakes. And so, oh, the tea knife. This is, I think you're referring, Jan, to the tea knife, mm -hmm. the Puar knife. Josh says, yeah, I actually have one tea bucket with strainer oh cool i thought i bought it at uh pacific mall in markham basic basically like a portal to china haha <laughs> totally there's actually a pacific mall in vancouver too i wonder if they're related very cool place and similarly like it's a portal to china very cool place and amazing hand pulled noodles mm, okay duly noted we might look for that place josh says oh my god yeah i've had a tea a tea bucket overflow only twice, but thank goodness I had the foresight to place it on ceramic, on a ceramic plate so it caught most of the spillover. But cleanup still wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah, it's totally embarrassing yeah. when it happens because you've got plenty of time to catch it. Mm -hmm. Jan's laughing at that, which is, you know, me too. And Josh says, I now use a wastewater basin to dump any large amount of water so my bucket doesn't fill so quickly. Ah, that's pretty smart. Keep her, keep her going. And Jan yeah. says, well, I have ordinary tea tray. Once after three tea sessions, I wanted to pour the water out and I almost spilled it because it was so fully filled. Yeah. Oh, I totally It happens know that. more with so the... So full and it's so flat. Yeah. And when you walk, it's like every it's just, little move mm, is like, yeah. yeah. It's like totally wavy. Mm, this is the last infusion of the tea, I think. I did another long, long steep. steep. Mm. I'm going to do a long steep, but uh, I just love how the liquor is lighter. Huh? The liquor color is lighter. Yeah, it's gone to more of a gold. Oh, but I love this. The flavor is still like it didn't. Uh, you know, some tea it starts like really high and suddenly three infusions plummet mm -hmm. despite the liquor color or stuff. Right. The flavor in the liquor is gone. This is not. It's yeah. consistent. This is like consistent a, with a, a gentle, little bit gentle, gentle, gentle landing. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And that dry longumberry is still really prominent. And that hint of smoke. The whole thing just slowly goes down together. Nobody's, like, there's no holes developing. Like, oh, the smoke is gone and it's all longan. Yeah. Or the longan's yeah. gone and it's all smoke. Oh. It just all go down nicely together. Mm. Good choice of tea, I have to say. Mm. Good choice of tea. It's right. really matching this bright autumn, like, a, the vibe. I also ordered the weather. So, perfect job by me. <laughs> Oh, there's still a nice little, sorry for the squeak, guys. Have a little smell of that. Mm. I put the drip in your glass, hope you don't mind. <laughs> All right, guys, well, let's, um, I don't have the next page online in the book, but if you flip that page, yes, we're heading into the water section, mm -hmm. as I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream. 
Um, it's going to be a new section. I'm super excited to get into We've it. We finished all the tea accessories, every detail, uh, every detail of this. Now, if you go to China, I guarantee you, with anybody, you can recognize almost all the stuff on tea table. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And have a pretty practical uh, idea of how to pick them. Um, mm. It's so easy to get distracted by the sort of fancy details and feel like those are the most important things. But like the teapot, does your leaf fit in the top? Right. You know, really practical Don't details. Don't feel obliged that you have to set up the perfect tea setup to mm. start drinking tea. Yeah. Don't feel like uh, you have to choose uh, everything to its perfection. Get brewing, never, yep. never be afraid. And uh, when choosing that, uh, especially choosing the very first either teapot, guy one or teapad, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the practical side first, uh, that's most important. Then later on, you can develop more, you know, your exactly. likings or what you care the most. Yeah. Yeah. And never be afraid to reach into your own cupboard and repurpose something, especially if it's kind of you're not sure what good it is. Maybe it can be useful on your tea table. Like Josh, you can polish it up and get it all fancied up. Mm hmm. So I hope you enjoy uh, today's uh, live uh, translations on the all Kima's kinds of glitches 12. and twists and turns in episode twelve. We lost the sound. We uh, were a little bit late, technical difficulties, but <laughs> nothing can stop us from bringing great content to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm super. I don't know if you guys remember, but we're not we're not fans of a schedule. But we're on week twelve, keeping it real. Sunday at one p.m. Mm -hmm. um, not too fancy, but full of good information. I hope if you like what you're hearing on these uh, videos, please, before you forget, reach down and give us a little thumbs up down there on the YouTube. Yeah. It really helps the channel grow. Mm -hmm. uh, we love doing it. Right. Um, the links to the teas are going to be down below. So if you want to try some of the uh, smoked lapsam uh, or the ginger may or any of the other amazing teas we have to offer, uh, it, it really brings us joy that you guys are able to enjoy those too. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week, we're going to talk about water. We already have a video Pretty detailed uh, talking about mm -hmm. uh, water. I think these two will be very complementary to mm -hmm. each other. So feel free to check out that video first. And uh, looking forward to see you guys same time next weekend. Weekend. Next weekend, yeah. Yes. Or next week because it's a week away from today. Okay. But until next time, Great guys. Great to know. <laughs> Keep steeping. Keep steep